YouTube to see whether is it uh is it live now? Where is my YouTube? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Nice. Dude, yeah, I see a little like it. Yeah. I see a little art. Matt, is that modded stuff? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, I'm just I was kind of uh afraid to tackle the first the first two pages are like a two page spread. Oh and, yeah, uh, yeah. So I I kind of wanted to, I was thinking kind of like manga style, open up the first page. I don't know if we want to have like credits or whatever, but, or some type of art. I was going to do like, you know, the kind of like how manga has a chapter header. And uh, I want to do like that for the opening. And then you open up for this two page spread and that's like the first and second page. Sweet. That looks awesome. Yeah. That's a cool opening too. Cause I heard, I hear people be often are like, they're like, you got to catch the reader and open with a splash mm. page. And I'm like, yeah, I get that. But, Open with a double splash page. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, get his oh, Art. What's up, Art? Hey, guys. What's up? Okay. Uh, oh, Art's All right. Here. Nice. Uh, yeah. All right. So let me just uh, do So we're live quick... right now, Art. Yeah, so we're going to we jump live. in and we're going to interview a little bit and talk about uh, Chrono Mechanics. And one interesting thing about this is it's on Tungsten's channel and he has a fair amount of subscribers and, and it's a whole different market. So it's kind of possible. We'll yeah. see how it goes. But yeah. And oh, Art cool. get ready because I wrote notes. <laughs> yeah. Tungsten is, well, lives right. in Singapore. Yeah. So let me just uh, introduce uh, uh, our guest here today to my viewers, uh, in case they don't know what we're doing. Uh, uh, Tungsten here. So uh, hi, guys. Uh, thanks for dropping by if you are viewing this now or later on. Today, we have a, have a guest, uh, an old man. So wonder why he stumbled upon uh, the company of young gentlemen like us. <laughs> so maybe yeah. let's just, <laughs> let me just show you guys something. He is actually an artist, uh, something to... Bring back some memory. Don't know whether he remember. This is uh Super Sun, right? You can see, right? So you can see that his art is here. Don't know whether us remember. Okay, so Super Sun, right? So this is one of the book that actually artwork on. And we have the page one over here. And this oh, is wow. <laughs> I don't know oh, that's I right. I forgot you bought the page. <laughs> so I have the page one of Super Sun, which is... Uh, <laughs> Was yeah. that on Mike's auction? Yes, yes, yes. And the thing is, I, I I, am not able to make it on those timing very rarely. So I remember for this page, I was like walking along the corridor. I said, like, hmm, I think I should just pop by. So I click on it and say, holy shit, he's, <laughs> he's offering something. I said, better beat it. <laughs> and it's like, after I beat it, I just went off. <laughs> yeah, so this is Art Tea Bear, legendary uh, inker for comics. <laughs> and uh, I think I'll leave it to Art to uh, introduce a little bit about himself. And today we are actually going to talk about one of his... Uh, a new comic book that he's uh, working on and he's actually running a campaign on Indiegogo. He's very successful. He's already funded. But let's uh, hear a little bit of, uh, maybe Art can share a little bit of his uh, history, uh, his work, and then we will go into the uh, so-called the uh, campaign itself. While he's doing that, I can show you guys more of his work over here. Yeah, go ahead, Art. Okay, so you want uh, like a little bit of... Just a uh, little background. Thing? I guess my viewer, no, we, we are some of them may be interested in comic, but we are actually not from the comic uh, background or kind of thing. Yeah, just a little bit of intro about yourself maybe, and then I can show your art a little bit. Well, before most of you were born, I was doing comic books way back when in the old days. <laughs> so I, I think I broke in, uh, it was 84. I think I was doing, um, I was working as, uh, as an illustrator in 82. So I think I worked... Um, in Hollywood, LA as an illustrator for two years. And then I believe I broke in in 84 into comic books. And so I worked initially as Jim Valentino's assistant and then worked my way up to full on inking um, over Jim's pencils. And then um, the indie market just could not support, like it, it's weird because independence usually works. You get your upfront money but then you never get your back end money. <laughs> yeah. oh, 
Because back end right. based on sales, right? So yeah. So you get you get an upfront against royalties, and then um, if there is sales or whatever on the back end, then you get paid, and it started turning out more and more as we were doing work for this publication. They uh, this this company makes ElfQuest. It was actually Wendy and Richard Penny um, who stiffed us on the money, but anyway. <laughs> It's all water on the bridge at this point. But uh, anyway, we weren't getting our back end money. So I needed to make real money. And I, my heart was always in independence more so than Marvel and DC. Um, not that I was opposed to it, but I kind of wanted to always create my own books and things like that. And so it was harder and harder to make ends meet to pay my rent and things. So um, I put a portfolio together and went to New York City and start shopping my portfolio around and i got work this is going to sound a lot easier than it really was but i got work at marvel comics as an inker and i got work at dc comics as a penciler on the same day so yeah it didn't take too much um to get the door open at marvel and dc but up to that point it was it was a little hellacious yeah so was that, that was that workload hard to handle or was that doable? Oh, well, I had never done any of this stuff, so it was crazy insane. And also, I was staying with a friend who was Ralph Macchio's assistant editor at um at Marvel. So his name's Craig Anderson, and his father is the great uh oh I forgot his first name. He's the creator of Marmaduke, uh the comic strip. So oh, cool. Craig Anderson is the son of, uh, I can't remember his name now. But uh, anyway, so I was living in a strange town. I was, I had probably just turned 21. Um, so I'd never really travel outside of California. And I'm in New York City. I'm living in, Hell, in Hell's Kitchen off of 42nd. No, it was 46th Street. So I'm walking every day into Marvel in D.C., and doing work. So I'd work in the bullpen and then I would work in this in this apartment. It was just a one room apartment. And I was working on some funky uh, like table, coffee table. And I didn't even have art supplies. So I had had to buy art supplies while I was there in this in the city because I didn't know what to use. I didn't really know the tools or anything like that. There was no Internet. You guys, there was no way. <laughs> out any of this information so i'm kind of learning just as i'm going along with a gun to my head you know under crazy pressure and so every all the editors at marvel and dc are saying you have to make your deadline you have to make your deadline if you don't make your deadline then you don't work. i'm like ah! so i'm freaking out and so, so guys uh, uh so uh, having yeah. pressure is good <laughs> we have so uh, anyway, now because, because of all the pressure story. yes that's good <laughs> so long story short, I made all my yes. deadlines and did a good job, and hey. and the rest was history after that. Yeah, and, and here we are, Chrono Mechanics. All right, so um, so that's a little bit of a, a background on art. So today we are going to interrogate him, and today, or El, uh, uh, although Nawel is our uh, boy, but today we have to cut ties because he's the color colorist for. Uh, Kono Mechanics. So today, sorry, Noel, you are not part of the team. Today, only Matt is with me. Hey, where's Matt? <laughs> oh, where's Matt? Oh, no. Oh, did Matt drop out? I'll, I'll... Oh, no. He left me. I bet he, I bet he lost connection. I, mean, I don't uh, think Yeah, he... yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, it's so one it's, against it's, two. It's, yeah, it's me and Art versus you then, Tungsten. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we had a like uh, yeah. yeah. so uh, background on um, Art. So uh, he had a campaign going on. So let me just first show you guys uh, the campaign page. Uh, you guys can see this. Uh, yes. uh, let me, let me, yes. Yeah, so oh, wow, it's doing campaign. good. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. doing good. Uh, oh, it's in S SGD. <laughs> let me scroll down. Art, okay, did, 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 full me, did starting fulfillment on black and white give it a boost? Did you did, notice? It okay. actually did. So what what was the total? I didn't see the the number there. It's it's almost at fourteen k right now. No 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 no. That's SGD. SGD. Oh, oh yeah it. yeah. Oh, okay, I so. always mix up beside. Like, mm. Gotcha. Yeah, you yeah. actually got me excited there for a minute as well. <laughs> I know. Yeah yeah. No, that's funny. We'll make like, it that's out. Way higher than I last looked at. We'll no. make it out. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, it will it will get to that number, but it'll be another few days, whatever. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, so this is a uh, coronal mechanics. Uh, so I think, uh, okay, Matt is here. Thanks, Matt. Okay. Matt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm here. <laughs> All right. So maybe let's just uh, uh, watch the video because I think it's a very well prepared video to get us a little bit of background instead of art talking. Let's just watch the video. Is there a hissing sound? Let me, I think it's Corson's. Let me mute his. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I have to mute you, Matt. Okay, let me just share screen and uh, we can run the uh, so-called video to have a good look. Let me try this. I didn't try this before. Yeah, we'll see if it picks up audio. I think it will. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, wait, let me see. Yeah, some of the screen. Share the audio. Share audio. Do I have to? Okay, let's try. Mm. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Let me try share audio. Share. A little backstory on the video, if that's what you're playing. Uh, Von Klaus of Monster MD fame put that together for me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can you hear the audio? Hi, all. I'm Archie Bear, and I'm a comic book artist. During my 35 year career, I have worked on many comic titles for DC, Marvel, and Image Comics, such as Adventures of Superman, Ultimate Spider Man, X Men, Cable. Spawn, Youngblood, Super Sons, and others too numerous to mention. Now, I'm rocking the indie scene, and that all began with my graphic novel, Black and White. And thanks to people like you, we made that campaign a huge success. Now, I'm hoping that together, we can do it again as I switch creative gears to offer you something new and exciting with a style created just for this Chrono Mechanics title. At this point, you may be saying, sounds good. But what is Chrono Mechanics about? Well, I'm glad you asked. Narwhal! Yeah, there's some <laughs> my, my color in. Of course, Narwhal comes in when it starts rocking. <laughs> Sci-fi action adventure graphic novel focuses on the best prepared team to ever turn a wrench. I'm talking about Team 9.2 of Sector 7. Chrono Mechanics is about the brave, knuckle-busting, stun-of-a-gun repairman who fixed the big machine known as time. And yes, when I say machine, you heard right. What keeps our time running smoothly is an ancient nuts-and-bolts cosmic clockwork machine that is as huge as the galaxy itself. So join Ooh, a prehistoric businessman with anger issues, Carvaggio, frustrated renaissance artist and inventor, Zinn, a child deity with the power of the gem, and a potential new recruit, Doug, a 70s rock god and slacker with crazy dumb luck, as they don their work suits and power up to repair a rip in time. Will our slacker step up to become a chrono mechanic and take his place as the fourth member of Team 9.2 of Sector 7? Chrono Mechanics, they do more before the dawn of time than most people do all day. We believe that you will have so much fun reading about the crazy repair misadventures of Team 9.2 as we did making it. So please support this campaign and then spread the word. Thank you. You are awesome. Sweet. Right. Hey, Art, did you do Dr Drawn and Quartered Fan Edition the other night with these characters? Yeah, it was a blast. Cool. I think, I think it was Eric uh, Hawkins. Uh, he did, I think he won and he did Doug like riding on a meteorite through the galaxy with, uh, with a, an amp, like he was towing an amp in zero G and there's all these like stars, like star fields and behind him and stuff like that. And it's, you know, how rockers put their hand over their head. So his hands over his head, like, yeah, in defiance. Sweet. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> cool. Did, did you get a sense like of. Like the, the fan art wise, is there one character more than any other that people were kind of drawing the most, or was it kind of even? Yeah, it was pretty even. There were there were two that focused on Doug, so I think Doug is the standout. Um, there were some really cool shots of the team doing work, you know, like on a on a work site um, and things like that. So that was cool too to see yeah. them in action. It's fun seeing, I've seen a few of that. It's cool having so many, uh, so much fan art in one night, having a bunch of different artists draw your characters is really fun. Yeah, I've never experienced such a thing. So it was definitely a high point. 
Yeah. And th they might do, I think they're going to do uh, Chrono Mechanics on the pros stream next Wednesday. I heard that. Have you heard that? I, I think, um, who is it? Andrew might have mentioned it to me. So I still have to look into that. If that's going to happen for sure. Whose channel is that going to be on, you know? <laughs> I, so the last one was on Yellow Flashes, and I think this one is not. So someone else will step up. Maybe Cecil. I'm not sure. Yeah, but I yeah. thought I heard Tug. Yeah, yeah. But definitely plant that seed and stay on them, and I, I will too because that will be sweet, and that, that will be a good publicity as well. Well, uh, if I have any control over it, you will be invited if you're not already. Oh, yeah. Maybe I'll uh, – I'll try and sneak in there to uh, compete with you guys. All right. So now for the uh, questioning part. <laughs> now, yeah, now, yeah. now, 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 it's <laughs> my turn to ask any your turn. <laughs> okay. Now, okay. First thing first. Okay. Very important. I, I think uh, this book, um, can can uh, can you guys tell me that uh, is there any age group or, or what? Uh, what's the like a target age group or something like that? Because uh, no, although it looks like a very very you know, uh, non the more the young kind of uh setup, but I can can you fill me in more like a yeah, it, it's actually um, it's in the pitch, it's Looney Tunes meets HG Wells. And when I say Looney Tunes, it does it does imply like like kids, but like Looney Tunes text Avery, so there were like jokes in there that flew right over kids' heads. So there was some adult situation <laughs> and, and adult yeah. references. So I believe that that's the best way to describe it, that it's, it has some adult um, uh, subject matter, but I don't think kids will fully understand it. Um, I, and I don't think, I mean, I guess in a contemporary way, if you think of the Simpsons or Futurama, it's kind of like that, but I, I, I tend to think yeah. that it's probably even a little bit more tamer than that. But there's definitely, I mean, Doug's a 70s rock star. And with all the vices that come with, you know, being in the 70s and being a rock star, you know, womanizing, drug taking, alcoholism, you know, all those things, they're in the book. Yeah, coming about Doug, <laughs> I saw this page in here. Is this supposed to be the initial or was it? It was just I was just goofing around <laughs> the studio. So Slash from Guns N' Roses. Yes. I drew Doug as Slash. I think I don't know if it's in that sketchbook, but I have a version of uh, Doug as Ted Nugent as well. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh, nice. Nice. Yeah. So um, Matt Carson is actually uh, was that very into Star Trek, right, Matt? Oh yeah. 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 So I think <laughs> you will have tons of time travel. <laughs> Oh yeah, I love time travel stories. Yeah. I'm into that. You guys both live in California. Have you guys ever hung out at cons or anything? Yeah, we met at, yeah. WonderCon we met when they had everybody like Kyung and Mike there, and that was fun. Nice. That yeah. actually knows the truth about the height um, discrepancy between Mike S. Miller and myself. So Matt knows <laughs> the truth, but Matt is going to take the fifth, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's a secret with me. And uh, oh. we, here's the secret that's out is Kyung's taller than all of us. So, yeah, Kyung's the Kyung. giant. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is he like, is he like 6'2 or something or 6'4? Yeah, at least. Oh, he's, wow. he's the Yeti. Yeah. <laughs> he's the gentle giant. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. Next question. Okay. Why team 9.2 and sector 7? Is there a special meaning to the 9.2 and 7? The 7 is a special, has a special meaning. Uh, uh, when I came up with the concept, my daughter was 7 years old. So 7 is a reoccurring number in chrono mechanics. All right. Any, any, and is 7, does 7 correlate with luck? And the, there's luck <laughs> themes in the book? Is that true or I don't know? Well, yeah, there's there's a little dumb luck going on with Doug. So, yeah, there's a little play there as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So the next one is actually what, what I'm interested in, actually. So we have four characters over here, right? Right? Yes. Four characters. So one of them actually interested me the most, which is uh, Caravaggio. Caravaggio. That, that, that guy over here. Because yes. uh, when we come to artists, I was thinking, hmm. Why Caravaggio? He doesn't seem to be an artist that is having a very good temper in uh, history. 
and he's like getting himself full <laughs> into trouble. Why Caravaggio? I, I mean, he's a great artist. He's uh David and Goliath's uh, painting is aw awesome. So why 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 Caravaggio? Well, so, well, a friend of mine had this observation um, when I was coming up with the concept. And he said, all four of those characters are you. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, you have a rock star. I used to play in like 70s, 80s, you know, hair metal and stuff like that um, in Hollywood. So I have kind of that musician thing. And then uh, there's, there's Oot, who's a prehistoric businessman. So... I've run an art studio here in California for you know decades, and then there is uh, Zinn, who is a bit of a pontificator. So I've known to be full of s, you know, in the past <laughs> as well. And so then you know it leads us to Caravaggio, who's the obvious. He's an artist, but he's also a frustrated artist. So one of the things is I remember, and I hope I got this right, when you know in Caravaggio's day. He wasn't. He didn't exactly get the accolades and the appreciation that he should have, or felt that he should have. So it wasn't until years later that you know they were looking. They looked back and go, "Wow, you know, he's a pretty talented guy." So I thought it would be fun to do a frustrated, you know, artist, you know, because I can relate to that. Yeah, because I think yeah. at his time he's like one of those artists that doesn't want to choose a very nice looking model. And all his things is like, you know, uh, uh, kind of, kind of uh, out of the norm. He's choosing like people on the street for his pose and whatnot. Great with a uh, dark and light kind of uh, situation. And, uh, yeah, getting himself in all sorts of trouble, fights and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, I think he's a little fight, underrated. Fight, and and yeah. our, our Caravaggio is, uh, he's a feisty guy too. So mm. he likes to get into uh, fights. Yeah. yeah. He starts really? a lot of fights too in the story. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, so I thought, you know, it's, it's uh, that type of person that starts a lot of fight. <laughs> and that's that's why your friends were like, hey, that's you, Art. <laughs> <laughs> All the different aspects. <laughs> it's always better to start the fight and then bail than to have to fight, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leave your friends holding the bag. <laughs> yeah, what do they say? If you get if you're with your friend and you get attacked by a bear, you don't have to be faster than the bear. You just have to be faster than your friend. Yep. Yeah, that is correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, so the next one is uh, why why does the character need to like sort of transform? If it's a spoiler, that you can uh, don't answer. It's fine. But uh, you know they have their own form, and then I see that they they have another form. Is there any re particular reason or anything like that? I think just as a kid, I always loved the duality of superhero uh, characters, and it always fascinated me. And, you know, Captain Marvel, a.k.a. Shazam, uh -huh. you know, um, was, was the character that um, I thought was very cool because he was a kid that could become Superman, and all he had to do is say Shazam. And so... It always stuck with me. So I thought what would be fun to do is to create a bunch of characters, just that ragtag Motley crew that don't look like that they would would be able to really even lift a hammer other than, you know, Oot. And uh, and then basically it enable them to to be heroes, you know. So they they don on the body transformation suit and then they can become chrono mechanics. So that's kind of the superhero aspect to the concept. So when they when they after they they punch the time clock, you know, they suit up, which is basically power up into these forms and with those forms they can um, do the job. So the job has has certain requirements that are that are, you know, thrust upon them and they wouldn't have been able to do it in their core cells. So one of the things Chrono Inc. does is enables them with the suits that they can do the job in because the suits also give them heightened strength, agility, and just enables, because they're, they're also bigger, they're taller than a normal human being so that they can wield these giant tools and fix the big cosmic machine known as time. 
Okay, I, I lost my train of thoughts. I was looking at the campaign page. Wait, hold well, on, it's uh. sort of like it's sort of like putting on your 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 work clothes, you know. Uh, so, uh, one yeah, of the yeah. things about Chrono Mechanics is it's the super fantastic meets the mundane. So, I wanted it to be like their pain in the ass job, you know, that they're just knuckle bun, you know, busting repair guys um, that go do you know their job, their thankless job, and then go home. And nobody really knows that they ever, you know, save the world or anything like that. It's just something that they do. It's not anything spectacular. Yeah. So, so when I look at the campaign, there's one thing that I see. Uh, I feel like, hmm, is there any uh, villains in this uh, so-called uh, first offering? Because I don't think I see any sort of indication or anything about a character that is like a the villain. Yeah, when I came up with it, I I initially didn't want it to be a G versus E kind of concept. Um, so, but since then, they do have rivals, but they're not necessarily like evil. So they have the quickie time guys, which is kind of a scaled down version of Chrono Incorporated. So they do shoddy work. Um, they always kind of cheat to get to the work site first before the Chrono mechanics can, um, so they can kind of undercut them and steal the job out from under them. So they're very competitive in a very petty way, and they do very bad work. And actually, Narwhal just finished up, um, I think it's page 12, that we introduced those characters in, oh. and he did a great job of coloring it up with the time streams and everything. And basically, they're responsible for um the trouble that the chrono mechanics are in at the beginning of the story the other thing i remember is there's like just dangers of the job like there's time mites right or is that what they're called but they're yeah they're chrono mites so what happens is the quickie time guys um they get into a game of uh what is it called chicken or turkey where you just kind of like try to push the guy off the road you know the old 50s thing where they would do that um and so they're trying to push the time in the time stream they're trying to push the time ship out of the time stream so they can get to the job site first and they do the quickie time guys succeed they push the um the uh, chrono mechanics ship out of the time stream but what happens is when they do that they push them into a new time stream that is um basically filled with these chronomites and chronomites are like uh they're technovores so they eat any kind of technology or any kind of metallic uh mechanized machinery and so when they get pushed into that um that time stream they basically get attacked by these you know this herd of chronomites and think of the chronomites as it's like turf war they also battle each other um, so they're kind of like old 50s gangs, you know, with uh, bats and chains and stuff like that and leather jackets. <laughs> I know this sounds <laughs> nuts, but you know, I can the story. <laughs> okay. Uh, I heard a rumor. I heard that there's someone who's trying to force you to include a galactic gong into the Kodo mechanics. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> gong? No, I haven't heard Not well. That. I don't know. Oh, we were joking about that on the stream. It, it was with Ethan, I think. Our, we were making a lot of people were making uh, jokes about phalluses, various phalluses. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and, and then so somehow it came up that there might a, a giant like pendu pendulum. Pendulum. <laughs> yeah, dong would make an appearance, but I that, remember now. I thought you said gong at first, but yeah. Oh, gong. Yeah, gong, gong. Gong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you never that, know. Maybe, maybe there will be. You, you, yeah, oh. yeah, you have to buy to find out. That remains a rumor. We'll say that. Uh, I'm sure yeah. Norma will sneak it in yeah. the background somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Maybe I can see if I can. Yeah, you'll it. color it, no, subtly. And then there will be an arrow that says, "Hey, Mike." Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah. Like some Disney uh, hidden thing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's funny. Years There's later, people will find it. A long tradition oh, of like sneaking that. stuff in. That happened with Marvel yeah. like two years ago. There was like a kind of little more a, a, like an Islam artist who was including some crazy Bible verses oh, yeah. sneaking in. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. 
or yeah, yeah, like yeah. I guess not Bible, but Old Testament or whatever, the Quran, you know. I think yeah. he got canned, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, that's right. like something that would get you fired. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can yeah. get the oil fired. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, maybe we just take a look at the uh, co campaign page because uh, I think my audience may not be familiar with crowdfunding and whatnot. So uh, over here, what we have is a Indiegogo page. I think the link, I put it in the description if, if I'm not wrong. If not, later on, I'll double check and I'll put it in your link to this page. So basically, this is a crowdfunding site. Uh, normally, we will put up different perks, and uh, you can uh, back this uh, so-called campaign. But we have to bear in mind that it doesn't mean that once you back it, you, you're going to get it straight away. It's not like buying stuff on the internet. So basically, to me, Indiegogo is a, is a form of uh, showing support to the uh, creator uh, to make their so-called uh, project come, come true. And uh, normally, the waiting time can be a little bit longer. But it's to me, it's a sort of a commitment. Yeah, so think, think uh, before you jump into it. And uh, what's the good thing about it is, uh, to me, is you can go look through all the process and sort of find out more about the creator and follow them and whatnot. So let me let us maybe just go through the perks first. And uh, yeah, shall we? Yeah. So I will need art or uh, now well to to sort of talk about the perks itself. So first off, we always have like a uh, featured perks. Uh, so this one is a sign and a sketchbook uh, and cards. Maybe uh, Art or Norwell, you can talk a little bit on the, yeah. All this well, offer. if you want to talk, Norwell, I've been doing a lot of talking. I don't want to, I don't want to hide the screen. Yeah. Norwell? Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of just going to read it because I'm not an expert. Okay. So that one's signed graphic novel and it's sketchbook and cards. The cards, mm -hmm. what's with the cards, Art? I haven't heard much about them. Yeah, the cards are going to be cool because each one of the tiers comes with, well, each one of the tiers um, comes with cards, but um, if there's two books, there's multiple cards, or four books, there's four cards. So each book has its own corresponding trading card. Mm. Oh, cool, cool, cool. So the sketchbook is comes with, the featured comes with uh, a team trading card that goes with the, the book itself, and then the sketchbook comes with an elucidator card mm. oh so I, okay gotcha oh so that's yeah that's a good that's uh, that's probably why it's featured because that's that's kind of for completionists that's where you get the highest page count you get the behind the scenes you get the sketchbook you get the cards so that's, yeah. a, that's a highly recommended one for anyone and I said for the sketchbook itself, uh, correct me if you're wrong, you're trying to do it in a different presentation uh, rather than a traditional portrait. You're doing like a landscape or something like that or something to do with, to make it look more like a blueprint or something like that. You want to, yeah. Yeah, uh, it's it's kind of a like a widescreen format or like a centerfold or like calendar. You know how it goes, um, like you open it up and down versus side to side. Um, so I thought it would be fun to do a different format since we don't have to worry about newsstand and all that other stuff. We can, we can play with the size and, um, and shape of it. And so what else is going to be fun about the sketchbook is it's going to be narrated by the chrono elucidator. Uh -huh, this guy over here. Right? Yeah, that's the, that's the hologram. And the chrono elucidator is basically the brain center for chrono incorporated. He's the giant computer that regulates all time streams, all the jobs, all the employees, everything. He keeps track of everything. And he wants more than anything to be a chrono mechanic. So oh, okay. um, he, he wanted to be like, like a human. So he does have a holographic human form. So he can interact with humans and stuff at the same time being this giant computer. And the fun part about the sketchbook is he's going to narrate the sketchbook. So he's going to kind of like, you know, what Art was thinking here is this. So he's going to kind <laughs> of speak cool. for me in the um, in the narration on the sketchbook. Art was thinking this when he came up with that idea, uh -huh. you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, cool. It, That's a nice touch. I think, I think, yeah, this, I think this is the first time I, 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 I noticed this this guy over here uh, okay let's go on we have the feature then we off uh we have the uh by the way that's that's another thing i like about those crowd uh, sort of funding campaign we sort of the creator can do things that's out of the norm i think that's a great value add for for myself when i look at campaign as well 
rather than you know getting a traditional kind of book no you have something interesting going on okay the next one i think is a very uh straightforward we have the graphic novel and the uh trading card and signature so all, all the books are signed art yeah by... all the books will come signed by me and my co-writer pamela t bear i see i see all right if narwhal lived closer we'd get his signature in too <laughs> <laughs> We'll fly him over. We we uh, we will set a stretch goal and fly him over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. Maybe, you know, we could do something like that. Yeah. <laughs> or or the, the other time I was uh talking about this idea whereby you know maybe we can just uh print some stickers that there's design for a campaign. Uh, uh, uh because stickers are smaller, so you can print like a, a big sheet of a sticker, one whole stack. Send it to a Nawel. He can sign it and can you can send it back. Because it's designed for the campaign, <laughs> you can design a spot, whether inside the book or whatever, with a square. Then anyone can just stick the sticker in there. <laughs> That's a cool yeah. idea, actually. That yeah, yeah. Idea. yeah, yeah. You can no, you can if you want to go even further. It could be like uh, no, at the, at the back of a book. If you have like four creators, uh, you have four boxes, and then the because the sticker is designed, but for this campaign, the background will merge to the the book that is behind you just imagine a back cover with four white boxes and four stickers that will go in to complete the picture like a zigzag puzzle and these stickers you can send it to your creators they can sign it you can send it back and then you can uh, put it in and uh if the guy choose to stick it on you can complete it if not you can leave it outside but it's still a signature on it and it's pertaining to that campaign and i think it'll be cheaper to fly someone down you can send a sticker and send it back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you know why we thought of that? Because myself, Nawel, uh, Matt, and uh, Nate, we are actually working on a, a com comic book ourselves. So, so all this thing is like coming to my mind how, how we sort of put things together. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. That's so a great idea, though. I digress. I digress. <laughs> I, I have all sorts of crazy ideas. <laughs> all right. I digress. Okay, yeah. let's go on. Tungsten said, because our book is about uh, modding Nerf guns, kind of loosely, that's the theme, because that's what Tungsten's interested in. And he's going to, this is, I'm going to hold him to this too, but he says he's going to make me, Matt, and Nate, who's the co-writer, um, each our own modded Nerf gun. He's going to mail it to us. Yes, so, I will. In fact, Noel, I already purchased some of the parts. Oh, <laughs> sweet. That's going to be so cool. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking from, for each person, what is the uh, so-called the uh, the one that I want to make. Maybe I'll start with Nate. He's like working on his book, right? Uh, Hex, Hex, sorry, we digress a little bit. Uh, Hex Wood. And yeah, it's Hex like Western, Western make, uh, mix with uh, magic, right? Yeah. So I can make something that looks like a Western kind of thing. Ah, okay. Okay, back to back to chrono mechanics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After yeah. this brief, uh, what is it, a commercial break? But yeah. Commercial break. Right? Well, right. just know a Nerf gun would come in handy here because it'd be fun to terrorize my cat with it. <laughs> then I'll give you a full <laughs> auto Nerf. <laughs> Modded with, <laughs> modded with like water pellets or something. Yeah. <laughs> I think water pellets is actually illegal in uh, Singapore. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, a, yeah. I mm, it's I, like bad kitty, get down from there. Pop, 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 pop. <laughs> the uh, cat uh, runs, runs away and never comes back. <laughs> so the question to, to add will be, do you, how, how, what's the, what's the pain level? Do you want me to inflict on your cat? Please let me know. Then I'll calibrate. <laughs> 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 you have to let me know all these things just, so just enough it. velocity for accuracy all no right. pain oh, okay. <laughs> no pain nah no pain no gain remember pressure <laughs> <laughs> that make make you no know, make the art today <laughs> who is who is uh who he is remember the pressure art mm. so no pain no gain all right <laughs> all right let's carry on all right the next part all right bring on the posters okay so i think this is uh all on the posters and mini prints what what are mini prints uh, this this is the one that i'm not too sure they're prints that are the size of a comic book uh -huh. so um they're printed up the size of a comic book and um they're gonna be we have four variants oh, yes. so each one of the mini prints will be one of the covers that uh we're going to reproduce based on um uh, who is it? We have Carlo Barbieri, we have Tom Bancroft, we have Cheeks uh, Galloway, and we have Aaron Lepresti. 
So this way, they'll look exactly the way you see them here. They won't have logos or anything interrupting them. They'll just be that image that you see right here. Yeah. Um, so I thought that would be fun. And then we have two oversized posters slash prints of like the Doug World Tour and the um, Slip It to Time or whatever. I forget what the title was It was for the other print. All right. Okay. So the other one, let me just quickly just. Oh, time to panic! Yeah, it's it's um those are oversized, so uh, those are like full on posters with four prints. Yeah. Nice. So oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So oh uh, yeah, so that will bring us to the variant cover. Four of them. Um, these are the four variant cover. So who, okay, I I I'm actually not very familiar with uh this. I mean the artist. So who are these for again? And when what is well, the Carlo Carlo, you know, Carlo mm -hmm. Barbieri, who did Carvaggio, he's uh, the same uh, yeah. artist that did your um Super Sons. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. How about the, the other three? Tom Bancroft is mm. uh oh, a, a major, major Disney animator. Ah. Oh, and okay. he worked on Mulan. He worked on a bunch of films, oh. but his big claim to fame is Mulan. And he did the design work and the key animation for the character Mushu, the dragon. Mm. Mm. And his, his twin brother, Tony, was the director of Mulan. So they're good friends of I mine. And, and when uh, oh. Tom heard that I was doing this campaign, he asked if he could do a drawing of Doug, and I said, "I said, heck yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to say no." And so, so he did. He did um, Doug, and so then we have uh, Cheeks Galloway, who Galloway. did Oot, oh, and good. you probably know uh, Sean's work. He did. Um, there were two movies, like animated movies of Hellboy. So yes. he worked with Mike Mignola on all the animated designs for those two movies. Um, and then he worked on, I think it was called Spectacular Spider-Man. He did the design work for that animated cartoon as well. So he does video games and um, and animation designs. Mm -hmm. So he was nice enough to do one. And then also my friend in comics that I worked with in the past, uh, Aaron Lepresti mm -hmm. did Zinn. So I worked with Aaron um on detective comics for DC. Um, I think it was futures and for DC. And he kind of started his career with me as inking him on an X-Men annual way back when in the day. Mm. I, I really like the, uh, the this, this wood one. It's uh, really it's kind of, uh, yeah, very sort of uh, appealing to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like that cell shaded animation style. It's yeah, that's weird. that's that's actually what inspired me to start talking with you, Narwhal. Is I saw how amazing that can look, and your stuff is a lot in line with this. And also, just keep he's surfing the time stream there, so that's oh, yeah. why the time stream oh, in the wow. background there. Oh, cool. cool! Oh, there's some reference for that kind of too, because yeah. we that's what yeah, we were designing. Yeah. Yeah, we're designing the time piece. stream right now, um, mm -hmm. Narwhal and I, and he's sure. doing some killer, killer uh, color design for it. Um, yeah, so now you want to talk a little bit on your color style for this uh, comic book, uh, this approach? That you're yeah, yeah. On? So, like, my thing was, I, I never broke into the industry, really. So then with Comicsgate, kind of, it's, I'm, I can pay rent and buy food with the work I've been doing. And I was, but I was like, man, I skipped that whole phase when you're younger, where you're like working for people who are older and wiser than you. So I was like, I want to do that. Mm. Still. So the opportunity arose with art. He re reached out to me and I was like, I had the opening uh, between my own Indiegogo's. So I was like, I can do this. So, um, and yeah, it's been good. Art's been pushing me and I've been improving, which is, I kind of anticipated that I was thinking, you know, I bet if I color for someone, whatever coming out the tunnel on the other end, I'll be a better colorist for it. So it's like worth it even in that respect of just as an investment of improving my skills. And uh, so I've been, I've been enjoying the process and yeah, this project's cool and my style is very well suited for it. It's kind of a little more of that cell shaded style, you know, less, a little less airbrushy, a little more cell shaded, but we still do use gradients and we use color holds and, and astral effects, you know, and all that. But but yeah, that's that. I mean, you came in strong, Narwhal. So um, 
you already had a lot of the skills. It's more or less just mm -hmm. kind of like honing to get like, you know, a chrono mechanics look because you have some mad skills, dude. You really mm -hmm. do. Yeah. Yeah, within mm -hmm. Comic Skate, I've I've gotten kind of a reputation as being a good a good colorist. I I, I look at uh I'm always super humbled by Kyle Ritter. He's he's the king of the colorists. <laughs> And then I, I'm like somewhere beneath him, but yeah, I'm like a well-known colorist in comics. Well, little little known fact, like Kyle and I were working um, with each other even before, you know, he he started really getting his breakthrough with Ethan on Cyber Frog. So if you go to, I think in my Deviant Art, some of my uh, commissions and stuff were colored by Kyle Ritter yeah. when, when he was breaking in. Yeah, cool. Hey, I wonder. Cool. Art, do you know, can you answer this, like, where Kyle Ritter came from? Because he is so talented, and I just wonder, like, was he in the industry before Comicsgate? Like, I know Ethan said Kyle Ritter sought him out, and Ethan, as Ethan put it, he says, uh, thank God for Kyle Ritter. Cause I, I know where he came from. Where did he come from? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Starblades fame. Yeah. Um, no, no, he was just he was just oh, a fan. Okay. So, like I said, he was he was just coloring commissions and things that I would put up just to try to get, you know, a, be a blip on my radar. And he was a major blip. So then when I, um, it, it's so weird. Like he went from just doing these commissions that I, that I was uh, putting up and he was just doing it. I wasn't hiring him or anything. He was just doing them as a fan. And then when I saw like he was the colorist on cyber frog and I saw those pieces that, that uh, Ethan was putting up, I was like, that's the same dude. Like he took like a major leap from when, when he was doing stuff with me to uh, Ethan on cyber frog. I mean, that's, that's the good thing about the cool thing about talent, especially where you're at right now, Narwhal, where you're going to be like six months from now, who knows? You know what I mean? Because uh, you still have a whole bunch of talent that you haven't drawn on yet. So you're still, like uh, an unproven talent, not unproven, but untapped talent as far as where you can go and what your prospects can be. Yeah. I think comic skate has helped a lot with that of like throwing us all into this big ocean of like friendly competition, like even like Matt, you know, so I look at Matt's art and it's, it's, it's like that a little bit slightly more anime style, kind of like my style. And like that pushes me, you know, cause it, it's amazing. Matt, I say before Malin's uh, streak of, of, of winning a uh, drawn and quartered uh, nefariously or whatever, all oh, hilariously as well. But uh, Matt was the champ. Matt had like three or four oh, yeah. uh, wins. Two in a row and yeah. we are going for three. Right? Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. going for three. Yeah, I was going for a three peat. I was yeah. one, of the, one of the first. <laughs> one. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Matt, your, your work is awesome. And uh, I can't remember the book you were working on right now. Uh, or not, oh, I mean, oh. the one that you had funded before. Um, and the oh, right. Agenda. Oh, my gosh. I, I forgot his name right now. Uh, James. I, James Hudnell. Yeah, James oh. uh, passed unexpectedly. I felt so yeah, yeah. bad for you, brother. I mean, it's a it's a shame, you know, when somebody passes, but also the yeah. prospects of that series coming out um, kind of yeah, died so along, people. you know, with the writer. So that that book oh, man. was gorgeous, man. Thank you. Thanks, man. I, yeah, we were so excited about them. James was just like, we would meet and have dinner because he, he was out in San Diego. Mm. And uh, we'd meet and have dinner and we'd talk. And, and we're on the same page, like my brother and I and James. And we just had like dinner with him, like after the con, just like actually it was a few weeks before he passed, maybe a week before. And we were just like really stoked about, you know, what we're going to do with the series. And then, yeah, I was sending them pages. And then, yeah, I was just found out by checking Facebook. Yeah, so, well, yeah. I love this comic Harsh Realm, and then he had a oh, yeah. short like TV series based on that on Fox. Yeah, um, Chris, I Chris thought it was a great idea. Yeah, yeah, the X Files uh, creator. Yeah, Matt, were you and he like talking, planning deliberately and openly like through about Comic Skate and joining and stuff? Oh um, yeah, we were excited about it. We thought this is a great um, chance to like you know, find, tap into, uh, uh, fans, you know, directly. And, um, James was just convinced that this was the new way of doing things was going through, you know, so nice. funding yeah, we're, you and James, and you and James went on with Ethan at least once, I think. Yeah. He, we actually launched it. Like, um, Ethan launched on his channel 
And that was in the drive through at in and out And then Mike called me. He's like, Ethan wants you on. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, I didn't even get privy to the – that we're going on there. And it was already running. I'm like, what the heck? Well, welcome yeah, to Commerce Gate because that's exactly how it happens, man. Nobody knows anything yeah. until it actually uh, comes to pass. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 The latest that's been kind of fun to watch is The Ascension of Carl O. Rowe. He's 22 years old. And he has that awesome book, Death Sworn. Oh, from Ireland? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And he's, yeah, he's, yeah. he keeps saying Commerce Gate is punk. He's been saying that since for like two years. And it's like, I kind of agree. It's kind of fun, this indie punk movement in some ways where it's kind of. A little rebellious and, a little yeah, and, and I also like the way uh Van Krauss uh, yeah. say it is yeah. like uh um uh, you know how many times in history that uh, you you thought of things whereby you know there's a movement is that echo hmm okay okay so, yeah yeah okay Oh no, there's echo again. Yeah, there's, anyway, there, oh, there is a slight echo. It's not too distracting though. I don't know. Okay. So basically, uh he said I know in, in, in history, you know, he always watched there's such a big movement, let's say in uh in certain uh, area. And how cool is it that you get to join and uh be part of the movement and uh make a difference? You no, know, whenever I think about comic scale, I always think about the uh impressionist uh painting movement. Yeah. They, oh yeah, they, yeah. Yeah. So I remember, you know, impression impressionist people also use this word to sort of put the artist down initially. Uh, he's just doing an impression of the sunrise or something like that to to Monet kind of thing. So it's like a group of artists that are uh, sort of explore uh, the use of uh, paint, you know, sort of the the pigment, you know, to depict uh, light and whatnot uh, that way. So it's like it always reminds me of you know, a word they used to sort of put put people down, but uh, the movement grows and people are those artists are like individuals as well, like, like you guys, and they do their own stuff and they work hard on it and then you know, they put it out. Of course, there are different clicks and uh, growing. You know, at, at the end of the day, you know there are many many types of uh, sort of uh, impression impressionist kind of style kind of kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so I always thought about that. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Another one, and Art, you might have been the one to say this to me, but it was a good thought. Is that it's it's bottom up creativity instead of top down creativity. Where at Marvel, you got the editors editors controlling everything, and kind of their taste will guide the house style or whatever. But at Comics Gate, it's free for all of whatever um, ca catches on. You know, kind of will get will get pushed to the front. You know. Yeah, and everybody shares their platform with. Um, everybody else. So everybody has an, a, an opportunity to be heard and seen. So the one thing I always hated about commerce and business is like, let's just use, um, let's just use Prince or let's use Madonna or, or Michael Jackson, one of these pop icon sensations, right? In music, they get, they get million dollar budgets to advertise their newest record or their newest album or whatever it is, right? But then there's some indie band that they just signed that gets zero amount of, of advertising revenue to get behind their new, you know, their new album. And the shame is that it should be the reverse. Like those, if you're going to sign these guys and you're going to give them a shot, then give them the utmost, um, and the best way to succeed, right? Put everything you have behind them because they're the ones that need it more than Michael Jackson or Madonna or Prince or whoever it is. And I always thought that comics were the same way. Like when I was when I was working on the Ultimates, right? The Ultimate X-Men, Ultimate Spider-Man, I had an art dealer. Um, and so it was a big New York art dealer. And I told him, I said, if I if I sign a contract with you for you to represent me, you have to sell other pages than these easy sell pages because these pages are going to sell themselves. I don't need an yeah, art yeah. dealer to sell those pages. I need an art dealer for to sell some of the lesser pages or the little known pages, the ones that don't get a lot of exposure. They're just as good. You know, They're still drawn by top talent and stuff, but they just don't yeah. get the notoriety. And so then, you know, long story short, he's selling all the top pages and I'm still, you know, left with the pages that I really needed him to sell. So I believe that Comicsgate and the way this business model works is 
that doesn't matter anymore. You know what I mean? Like, like the consumer is going to decide. As long as we're all in lockstep about sharing our platforms, then you know what I mean? Everybody can get the chance to be heard, to be seen, you know, to have their book put out there in front of people. And then the, the, let the free market decide whether they like it or not, you know, but you'll still have have opportunity to show it off. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally agree. So let's get back to selling books. <laughs> <Woo-hoo>! <laughs> yeah. Okay, the next one. Is actually the one that I backed so far. The two, two fur. Is it two fur? Uh, is that how it? Okay. So basically, it's a two of everything. No, my wife no, always asks. Yeah, it's two of the main book and then two of the sketchbooks. Yeah, and then so and my, then you get four you get four trading cards too. Yeah, yeah. So so my wife always asks me why do I need to buy two of everything? And then I say because I have two sons. I need to give them both each one. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's my best excuse. Don't and you get, don't you get a price break. You get a price break on it. And also, if you're a collector, because I'm still yeah. from the image days where there was a lot of collectors, they would always buy one, bag it as soon as they got it, and then they would have a reading copy um, as well. So I always think the two first kind of is for the collector as well. Yeah, tungsten's like that. I think. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Yeah. When, once I get it, I'll pick <laughs> one, and then uh, I will I will read the other one, and I'll mark it down as this is the reading copy. So you don't you dare touch the other one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> this one, this one, reading copy. Yes, that's okay. funny. That could be like a plot in a comic strip or something. Something <laughs> messed accidentally with the d- dad's reading or dad's uh, investment copy instead of the reading copy. <laughs> <laughs> all right so, <laughs> yeah they have to they have to track down a new copy or something before he gets home <laughs> or, he'll, or he'll beat him savagely no that's the main comic right there yeah <laughs> so, so the next one is the ultimate tier ultimate tier so this one is probably everything if you want uh everything you'll be this guy over here with all the trading cards and whatnot yeah well, the so, one, uh, the cool thing about the ultimate tier is there are four trading cards that you can only get with the ultimate tier. So if you're a completionist, there's 10 Chrono Mechanics cards in the collector set, but only four of them are in, available in the ultimate tier. I tell you what, uh, guys, uh, please uh, carry on with the conversation. I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. I'm going to back this tier as well. Although I backed the t- two fur, but now I'm going to was to hear yeah. that, that you only get a few trading cards through that tier <laughs> and like, i'm doing it <laughs> okay well, you know, guys, i was so just gonna you ask you Art, my, if, if that I'm works gonna myself a while first. okay guys y'all carry on hold on yeah that's funny wait tungsten don't uh don't do it on stream well don't show any oh, your yeah. credit card information don't show the screen yeah. yeah yeah i'll be careful so you go ahead I, i'll do my best not to doubt myself y'all go ahead but yeah, so so art. How do you? What's the trading card process? Do you ha, like? Do you have a print? Is that special print files that you have for those, and you just order prints, I guess, to come with, and you ship them out with the books. Yeah, all the um the extras will be shipped with the books, as will the stretch goals as well. So um, all the trading cards will be packed away. Because uh, I did another Indiegogo. It's called Black and White, and we have a lot of stretch goals, and we have um trading cards with that as well. So with the Gemini mailers, you can kind of adjust the height on them a little bit. So you can you can put more than one book in there and you can put all your stretch goals and your uh, trading cards and stuff in there as well. Cool. Yeah, I've been thinking about trying to maybe do trading cards eventually because I, I love trading cards when I was a kid, but I've heard from a few people that they're a little bit more expensive than you might guess. And it's like a little high maintenance of ordering them and i don't know maybe it's just the expense is probably yeah the expense because um the thing is they come in like a sheet and the cutting anytime you have to get something cut or folded is more expensive like we did a calendar a 2020 calendar for black and white and the main expense wasn't really the printing it was the darn folding of the calendar so sometimes those like cutting and folding can cost you a little bit more money Okay. 
Yeah. The trading card has to be cut like two or three times, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my yeah. God, Tungsten, I just got your uh, your pledge. Thank you so much, man. Yeah. <laughs> Tungsten, <laughs> Tungsten might be, he might be C yeah. Comic Skate's most prolific backer. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, I, I back the black and white uh, ultimate tier as well. I, I remember your name. Uh, your name's in the back of the yeah, book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Hey, like, so can, cool. can I screen share? I can show your name off. Hold on. Yeah, sure, sure. That's cool. Yeah, Tungsten. That's. I'm glad that modded will get your name out there a little bit more too, because it'll be a fun for people to see <laughs> just, just how many books you've backed. Uh, uh -huh. like, <laughs> well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh okay okay <laughs> so, so here's black and white oh here's um okay let me see yeah, yeah so here's the book oh, that's beautiful looks oh, good thank you. and here's here's the trading card too it came out pretty good oh sweet yeah so we did it like the old marvel oh, nice. trading card so it looks like the old marvel nice. and i believe all the comics yeah. did i know at least um mike did his with the same design yeah. So they're supposed to all kind of sync together as one trading card set. I think that's what we were initially trying to do. Uh, Before the Great Rift. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tungsten Ooh, Man. Yeah. That? <laughs> Sweet. Hey, thanks, Art. Yeah. yeah I, remember, <laughs> I think, I do not know whether I remember this. Uh, before I bagged the uh, black and white, I actually spoke with Art before on a stream. <laughs> and I gave him a little bit of a hard time. I don't think he remembers. What was the hard time about? How hard of a time know. was it? <laughs> I don't know. I I probably asked you a few questions. I don't know. What is this? What's this? <laughs> it's like probably a year <laughs> or two ago during a stream. I think that was that was like the only time whereby I don't know what is on that guy's mind, Ethan. Uh, he said, "Okay, I'm going to put the stream uh link to the uh, comment or something like that." Anyone oh, can just watch. So you were on with, <laughs> with Ethan and Art. Nice. Yeah. I was like, huh? Is this guy crazy? Okay, I'll take <laughs> it. I'll just start <laughs> it. And then I, when I was on, I was like, I want to ask Art T-Bear some question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then of course, Art answered me. So yeah, he had my support. Where is Art? Hey, is he gone? Oh, no. Is he... Wait, wait, let me see. Uh... Did let's I? uh oh yeah yeah add this back it is it tungsten let's uh like s slowly wrap up in the next five to yeah. ten minutes and then maybe we can ask uh matt for another five or 15 minutes just yeah. catch up with matt and then we'll get out of here you know, say. yeah so i think that is more or less what we we cover so uh, uh I, uh I think my live stream is most of time probably uh, people watch it after it's finished not right no i don't do a lot of think so i don't think there's any much of a view right now so hopefully later on uh, when people catch it uh, they will find the uh, project interesting and give art the support i think it's a cool very cool uh project that i definitely will support yeah so just uh, maybe just one question last one question uh, okay Jen. no 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 uh, okay okay so i i know art doesn't want to give away why uh, this character Dark is uh, important for the Koro mechanics because he's like a slacker. Why do they even want him to be the uh, uh, a Chrono mechanics, right? right. Uh, I have my, I have my theory, so you don't need to confirm it. Just uh, I don't know. Can I can I can I, can I just say why? Yes, I think? yes, please. This will be fun. <laughs> this will be a lot. Of fun. <laughs> All right. Maybe I will miss like a hundred percent miss. Okay, this guy. When I think of uh. Chrono mechanic is time, right? Time about time. And this guy plays a guitar. The guitar is a six string instrument. Then immediately what comes to my mind is string theory. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> so is that string theory, theory of everything? Yeah. So you know, and I think of time is like, you know, if it's string theory, it's like vibration of the strings, you know, to make up things. So am I even close? Well, I, I will tell you this. Um, I, I did write a screenplay uh, with my writing partner, um, Matthew Hillary. And one of the ideas Hello? was that theory, this, the string theory. And there was in the big machine, it was out of tune. So uh. there were six 
and and keep in mind this is a massive machine so these cords these you know these strings are huge so what happens is he goes into this this part of the machine that nobody even knew existed because one of the things about Doug is he's got dumb luck right so yeah. he enters the chamber of the big machine and he's just floating there in in zero g and he just bumps into one of the strings and then it resonates and then he actually bounces off that one and then hits the other one so now they're vibrating but they're not vibrating in tune so one of the things and you find out the reason why a rock star was recruited is because he's got dumb luck, but he also knows how to tune the big machine. So yeah. what he ends up doing is realizes that these six giant cords are out of sync. They're out of tune with each other. So then what he basically does is he tunes the big machine. So if you know anything about piston or any kind of um, machinery, it's, even clockwork, it's all time. There's there's a timing that's involved. So what happens is that he basically tunes the machine like he would a guitar and then puts it back in tune and then the machine starts functioning properly. But only he would have been able to do it, you know, so that's why he was recruited. Yeah, so you're so kind I, of you're kind of right. I, I, yeah. yeah, I know my physics. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I just watch a lot of YouTube. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I think we can uh, sort of wrap it up. I want to thank Art for coming by, to dropping by to my very small channel. <laughs> yeah, to share his uh, project, and uh, yeah, so I wish him all the best. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you, and thank you for backing the project. And if you haven't yet, go check out uh, the Chrono Mechanics uh, Indiegogo page right now. It's it's live. It's going long. It's going strong. I think we still have thirty six days left. So um, yeah, go check it out. Hopefully, there'll be a tier that you like. Um, back it, and uh, Narwhal and I are working diligently every day, night and day, to try to get this book done in a timely fashion. And just know, I believe, Narwhal, correct me if I'm wrong, you and I are about halfway done with the book already. So I think we're 26, 27 pages into this. I think so too. Yeah. I was just thinking that it's about halfway and we want to get it done in about a uh, two months. And that seems realistic. So should be good. Yeah. So we're working to try to get this book done as quickly as possible, get it into your hands. So thank you so much, Tungsten, for having me on and giving me such a, such a spotlight <laughs> here. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming on. We, 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 can, uh, we can come on uh, all some other time as well to discuss other stuff. Uh, great to have you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah your, site looks, your site looks very professional, too. This looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I try my best. Hey, I'm hosting you guys, so I have to try my best. <laughs> well, it looks great. Yeah. Thanks. thanks, thanks, thanks. Yeah, so uh, thanks for coming. So uh, we'll uh, sort of release Art from this uh, interrogation, and uh, we'll spend some time. We'll talk to Matt, and we'll talk a little bit on our own project, which is modded. So Art, uh, you can uh, you know, uh, maybe hang hang around. Hey, can you hang? I'm, and I, anyway, okay, thanks for yeah. coming. Our, yeah. Our, yeah, you can hang or dip or whatever, but we're going to talk to Matt is the plan yeah. now. Okay, so well, hey, uh, I know Matt and Narwhal have a project upcoming, so uh, you guys knock them dead and uh, entertain the troops, and I'm going to go get some food with my family. So thanks again, Tungsten, and, and thanks, Narwhal. I think you were probably partially behind getting me on the show, so thank you. Yeah, thank you. We'll, we'll All right, guys. See you later. Bye-bye. Okay. See you, Art. All right. Now, yeah, that now went good. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for organizing that, Tungsten. That hey, good. no problem, no problem. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but unfortunately, like I say, I think my live audience is like zero to no. Yeah. <laughs> watching. That was oh cool because we can just tweet the link later, you know. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And this is like the longest stream we did, right? All right. So this is modded our own project. Uh, did I spell it right? No. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. So. How's the update, guys? We are a bit slow. <laughs> we we're behind what we originally <laughs> talked, but we're, we're, we're it's going good. We're gonna be we're gonna be okay. okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 all my fault, but but uh, yeah, I'm definitely right now. I'm like on the ball, and uh, I'm I'm getting into the daily grind right now. Yeah. I'm doing the two page spread, which I'm gonna finish up tonight, and then uh, if not finish up tonight, you know, probably tomorrow morning. But definitely going to. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm actually getting excited about this book as I'm working on it because I'm seeing the possibilities of what All right. what it's going to look it, like. So you know, yeah, you know, man, cool. yeah. I'm uh, I'm about to send like uh, a dozen of drone to hunt you now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't make me press the button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it, uh, well i'm gonna definitely uh like also um i'm working uh besides doing the comic pages um on this one i'm sketching to the side i'm gonna do some more of the nerf designs because you were talking about doing yeah, um, yeah, yeah. nerf uh nerf modded uh guns so i'm gonna actually get those nerf designs going to you and uh throw them your way and see what you think yeah. and uh sweet yeah yeah, I think uh, all our excitement will build more and more as we go. But what I like about this project is just from the base level, I'm pre I'm like pretty darn excited about it because especially just the col the collabs between me and Matt, I love that collab, and then Nate and Tungsten, like uh, the kind of like the writing team, you know, and Richard and the writers' room, but mostly like Nate and me and Tungsten and and Richard, you know, kind of did most of the writing, but. Like I, I love the script and I love the characters in the world. I think, I think, uh, yeah, like it's, I think it'll get, you know, a, a, it'll kind of raise all our street cred a little bit. Cause it's going to be, um, I don't know. It has yeah. good humor and a good story, good payoff. Good. It's like kind of quick in and out. It wraps up for what it is. It doesn't leave you hanging, but we're going to be able to do a sequel as well, you know? So. Oh yeah. I, I'm excited. Yeah. yeah just, uh, I'll just my stop. best stuff. Yeah. I can do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I feel like that, uh, Matt. I feel like I like that I can kind of just trust you. Like you're such a professional. Like everything you do is really good. So I'm not. Thanks. Too Even though we have a bumpy start, I, I like I said, I want to turn that around. So I want to uh, all the. I want to renew all the faith you have in uh, <laughs> me right now and prove it. I don't yeah. want to like, squander it. So I want you to know I'm, I'm going full steam ahead. And uh, like I said, as I do this first two page spread, man, I'm getting really excited about. Yeah, it. Yeah, so, you, you want to show the. Yeah, yeah, show us a little bit of on your camera, maybe. Yeah, let's see if I can hear. Um, all right, let me change positions here. I, uh, since it's, I'm using the uh, the uh, stream yard, I had to. Oh, um, we lost. Did we lost modem? For the, here, let's see. I'm gonna get back to my well lit art desk here. But yeah, it's I'm having uh like I said as I'm drawing this, it's always at the beginning of a project. Is always yeah, like a we slow can't start see for me. Man, 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 we can't see. Is we can't there? see it yet. Okay, yeah. here, here, wait a second. I'm just uh setting up my lights. I switched to uh, oh. I have a Japanese drawing table, which is like sitting icon on the now. It's, here we it's, go. Uh, on your avatar. It's on your avatar. It is not showing the desk. Oh, he, I think he's avatar. he's setting oh, up. The lighting. Oh, there yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. There we go. There we go. Yeah, so it's hopefully awesome. it's not potato cam, but yeah, it's okay. You can see the dome area. I'm getting in. You can see some uh, cloud formation, some shadows in the dome, the military buildings. You can see a little bit of the beginning, uh, oh, the stadium. Yeah. It's be heavy it's black shadows. It's gonna be all like black, and the uh, lit area in the ring is gonna be lit up with little patches of people. So you can see the shape of the uh, stadium yeah, inside, yeah. and then and so, here you got the. Uh, Ambassador. This is this is cool too, Matt, because you just took the script and you did the layout. So the script opens. This is one of the things I like about the script is it it jumps around a lot in the beginning to kind of give you the feel of the whole story quickly with some shots of a bunch of different things to kind of give you the sense of what's going on. And then it settles down into our story. And so you did yeah. it with a two page spread, which is a really good idea for some for a script like that. And so each panel is like, you know, a different a uh, room, a different world, uh, you know, not world, but a different like setup, you know? And yeah. And I, I want to tie it in um, so that it, it's not, doesn't feel too jumpy. So when you got the stadium here, you got the, the fight, even though you can't see him from a distance, I put them on the monitor, mm. you can see the fight going and then the ambassador in the floating uh, above the ring, but it cuts to him in the studio. So what I'm going to do is in the little TV show him still announcing. Oh, that's on awesome. The, uh, on the TV, so you can tell it's he's like talking about the uh, fight on the night show. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at that pose. Look at that body language. The, the, the ambassador. That's so awesome. Oh, thanks, thanks. Yeah, I want to have him like he's like looking down at the uh, host. A little perturbed, but yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm having fun with that, and uh, uh, I'm gonna make the ambassador. I'm still. Uh, we never discussed about a stature, but I'm. 
I was talking with my brother, and I'm going to try to play him up kind of like a Danny DeVito type build. Oh, sweet! Um, he's got that. He's got that like really <laughs> arrogant moxie. But I figured him hanging around the champion, who's really big and grand, and he's a smaller guy with a big ego. And well, yeah, he's got a big see. ego in the champion. He's kind of like, you know, isn't that right? The champion speaks. You know, he's he's always touting how great he is, but he's a smaller guy ambassador. <laughs> I, <don't, laughs> I still got to I still got to fix him up, but uh, mm. just trying to get the overall shape of him. But uh, but yeah, I'm excited about this. Like I said, I'm getting into it now, and and I wanted the two page spread. Uh, my brother and I were actually I was showing him my layouts. He goes, that would be a cool two page spread. And I thought I remember I think it was Kirby the way he would do books. He would do like an opening splash page, and then you turn that, and it would be a two page spread. So it really just draw the reader in right away Man. from the beginning. Man. Oh, yeah, I, know, I figured you, that. Said, you said there is going to be a splash page, or you you and you uh, yeah you visualize that like with the logo and whatever if. Oh, yeah, some something. type of like a uh, chapter opening, like illustration mm -hmm. or something to kind of like, get your attention, and uh, yeah. and then all of a sudden you open that and the two page spread, boom, nice. Something you know, to kind of tie into that, like how in anime they have I call them bumper screens before commercials and after commercials. Sometimes yeah. they have the logo and they have really cool. Sometimes it's a little minimalist, but they have cool art, like something like that. Yeah, something to tie into the to kind of say, okay, something's going to show the next page. Yeah, something yeah. we'll we'll pl uh, plan it out together. I'll throw some concepts to you guys to see what you think. What's best yeah, yeah. to go, but yeah, cool. So but, yeah, time timeline wise, we're still we can actually still make our goal of of like late spring having it all done, and uh, yeah. and yeah, like for me, uh, my schedule starts to clean up a bunch in January. So then I'll be going full time on this for you know oh, a couple months. Lost. Oh, do we lose Matt? We're, we're wrapping up anyways, but if he pops back, we'll yeah. say hi. But yeah. Oh, there you are, Matt. Um, so okay. yeah. So January, then it'll be like two months full-time-ish coloring. And I can chip away before then too. But um, so then, yeah, January, February, like right around March or so, we'll, we'll be close to uh, done, I think. And that's because like the uh, one of the nice things about having uh, ink, like Matt doing the art and me coloring it is – he can send me pages as they come. We can kind of do it in a rolling sense. It's not like it all has to be yeah. done. Then it all has to be colored or whatever. Yeah. So I can be working on it while he's working on page 30. I'll yeah. be coloring 20 or something, you know? Yeah. Like, so. yeah. yeah. And, and, and uh, I've been, like I said, it, once I start working on a project, I, it's always starting is like, it's kind of like you get a new sketchbook, you know, you're kind of nervous about drawing that first sketch because you want it to be the best. Right. And then once you get that down, then, you could just start cruising through it. But that first one, for some reason, it's like a, it's like, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's a slow roller. You're kind of like, oh, it's got to be perfect. And you realize, just sit down and draw and do it. Matt, you must remember at the best cat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, you must put a picture of a cat in front. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, I don't know whether I showed you all this before. Uh, actually, this is what, oh, what cool. I'm yeah okay so i'm working on uh this all this is design so this go here i have not painted up this will go here okay. oh nice and then these are the parts that are designed to make this look, look more aggressive so this goes here hold on so, matt you can use this as some inspiration for the uh one of the blaster maybe i don't know yeah okay and this will go here oh and it's actually secure uh, here. Oh wow, cool. <laughs> cool. And here, there's actually a sort of a LED screen over here. So I need to shade it from the sun eventually so that I can look at it. So I designed yeah. something like this. Hold on. Uh. Okay, so you actually shade from the sun when you look through this hole eventually. Oh yeah, yeah. You can see the light, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So cool. when, when we go, I, and this not all. Oh my god! Where all this now? Okay, there'll be something here as well, and there'll be something here as well. Oh wow, nice! The little <laughs> details. I like how you add in all those like little yeah. details. And, yeah, and this is not the the one. This is the one I painted on. So you oh, cool. Of this color. Oh, this is the same body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this is the this is my old one. So this is the one that I'm working on. So I'm just testing fit the cosmetic kit on the old one to see. But eventually you'll be on this guy, the red guy over here. 
Yeah. Because it's tight now. It's nice. <laughs> Maybe I should offer this as a tier. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> so much time. Ah. Oh, Oh, work, yeah. right? <laughs> I know, yeah. Be careful about that. We'll think about that before we do too. Because yeah, I, yeah, I think no, yeah, no, having, no. Yeah. having a pretty Indie. concise planned um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Indiegogo. Yeah. But the other All thing right. I like about the Indiegogo is um, bolstering the page count with the first issue of the Magical Girls, which is the other writers' room. Yeah, yeah. So, because yeah. then, then the yeah, the page count already would be up to you know 60, 70, somewhere around there, and then. Um, and then we could include like 20 or so pages of making of type stuff. And yep. then, which, yeah, like, yeah, then we're right into 90 mm. pages in the, you know, graphic novel length and a good Indiegogo. Yeah. Talk, talking yeah. about that, now you should start your writer's room, I guess, on your, that magical girl. And yeah. It's well, been a while. Yeah. I think we should, yeah. We should, but the thing is, we have the first issue written already, and so oh, I'm just okay, getting, okay. I see, I see, I see. I'm Got getting it. art done for that. Yeah, so okay. it might. It's kind of just on the back burner, and mm. it'll just be out there, and kind of we'll go by. Once that's done, then we'll start on the second one. But I should start sooner or later. And also, just uh, just uh, something that I start talking to someone uh, basically who does basically are my friends who does actually three D modeling. All right, thinking, can I do three D models of <laughs> our characters to even no, I just for my own own fun, uh, to three D print it out and have a have a fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> See what I cool. Print. So I actually gave them the champion. You know, <laughs> so that did. My uh, my girlfriend actually wants to cosplay as uh the uh quick character. Quick, yeah. Oh, sweet. yeah. You yeah. can be quiet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She wants to. She's like. She was like really. Like I love that that look of the character. She goes, I want to do that so bad. And then I'm like, <laughs> she's like, I hope promote it. I, I want to do it. And I'm like, that's cool. Because she's never usually into that doing that. But I thought that was funny. She's like so excited. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I wonder. She start we, looking for. <laughs> yeah, we should because it'll get it'll get uh, Indiegogo wise. This will get launched after Foreign Agent for me, and after some other stuff. So anyway, like we can be fairly ambitious with it and try and like raise. I mean, you know, like 40K, 50K, 60K. We can try it. We can set that goal. You know, it's okay to have a really high goal and just really kind of work work for it a little bit. But we'll see how it goes. You know, we might yeah. be disappointed to just get 10K or something. But also, I, I think, you know, it, sound, it, it feels really good to me. It feels like a good oh, yeah. chance. Of, I think it's going to do really good. I think we'll be surprised at how huh? good it'll do. I think <laughs> once we get... Uh, I'm just chill and... Uh... Uh, it's okay. <laughs> no pressure. I don't, I don't. Yeah, 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 man, <laughs> guys, don't give me pressure. But yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. I know Tungsten, I... Tungsten doesn't want to think about it, but yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyway, we'll wait till we get there. We, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, but we're definitely gonna finish the book first. That's definitely. Oh, yeah. If if anything, I don't know what's the future, but. Even with just the book itself, I'm really happy. It's great fun. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. yeah. Yes, you yeah, know. but enjoy of course, the process. of course, if it makes money, that is definitely good. Yeah, yeah, then we, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, uh, yeah our, I want to at least make your money back so we can do part two. The second one, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I think it's great, great stream. Oh man. Yeah, I know. Yeah, this is a good one, and good to meet, uh, see talk to you again, Matt. Thanks for joining us yeah. and being able to catch yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, we gotta do more often. I know we should stream more. Well, the thing too, Matt, we can stream sometime you and me and or like in tungsten too, but we can talk about uh, like conspiracy theories. We can talk about. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll <laughs> yeah, bring in all my, uh, bringing all my silly uh, time travel and uh, string theory and quantum string mechanics. Theory, yeah. And whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. I think me and Matt are both into that kind of stuff, like Hollywood being a, like demonic and, oh, <laughs> and, yeah. and stuff like that. Oh, <laughs> man, yeah. It's become, it's become a general knowledge now. Like, like, uh, like for instance, we, I was doing a little Halloween art class for kids um, with my girlfriend. And uh, this, we were drawing little like uh, creatures. I started off with a triangle head and she was like, Illuminati. And she's like a little uh, eight-year-old kid. I'm like, oh my gosh, my she's like, Illuminati confirmed. And I'm like, what the? <laughs> yeah, kid knows about this. That's so it's become a common like culture now or something to know about. Some yeah, of this stuff. One of the SNL guys, he and he he like arguably is Illuminati. The the oh really? Guy. But I forget his name. He's he's the young. He's pretty funny. But uh, 
anyway, he dates like all the, he dates like lots of hot musicians. It'd be better if I could think of his name. Anyway, he, they asked him like the difference between New York and LA for some joke, you know, for late night. And he's like, if it involves cannibalism, then it's in LA. And oh he, was, my gosh. he was just joking, but it's like everyone, that's kind of the jokes that everyone knows and makes and gets. It's like, oh yeah, all the weird shit is in LA. And the thing is in LA, they do like with Marina Abramovich, they have those like, the, oh, it's, yeah. um, it's fake cannibalism where they just have a- The parties? A, yeah. They have a cake that looks like a human and then they eat yeah. And then, or they have like actual live models laying in vats of like fake blood that, well, they say it's fake, right? Whether you just take spoons and they're dipping- get into sauce off their bodies and stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, that is gross. <laughs> yeah. It's sketchy. Yeah, no, it, it's like, it, it's things that I actually like heard some things before, but I just wouldn't believe it because it seemed so far out there. And now some of the things I've seen, <laughs> like I've never, of course, been to any of those type of bars, but I mean, some of the things I've seen out in California is like, oh, this is crazy. It's hard, not hard to believe after seeing some of the crazy stuff. <laughs> it's like, wow. It's yeah. Just- yeah. I did a stream about this the other night kind of a, because it was there the revelation that the lady in the news um was complaining that th- that ABC wouldn't let her run an Epstein story for 3 years like the Epstein Oh story. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so anyway, I, but this is kind of more just like conspiracy-ish stuff, but my they say Epstein ran um well, she said this too and this is like true-ish or to some degree, but he ran uh like blackmail kind of schemes on the elites kind of is the idea. Oh yeah. One way to, that's what they're talking about. Even, uh, was it, um, Anthony Weiner's, uh, computer. They talked about, remember Anthony Weiner, uh, he was married to, uh, Hillary Clinton's aide. Yeah. They talk about his computer actually having stuff on it. That was like, it was like a file they found that was called life insurance. Oh yeah. 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 See, so he, like like that, everyone kind of forgot, but yeah, that could come up again at some point. Yeah, there's, it's going to be a lot of things coming out that are people going to be blown away by. And uh, that's one thing that James Hudnall and I and my brother, we all get together and we talk about this stuff too. So James was like, he was up on a lot of stuff. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. It's kind of, it's like interesting, but, and also, yeah, it feels, they call it, I don't know if, it, if it's kind of like a, a contingent of being red-pilled a little bit, but it feels like like all the news is out there. It's like these YouTube rabbit holes and it's not really fake. You know, it's like however, however much you want to look into it, it's out there. Yeah to investigate yeah. and like i said i used to be i'm one of those guys i'm naturally kind of skeptical of everything and i i was like skeptical of some things years ago and now i'm like oh my gosh like <laughs> i see things it's just like i saw connections it wasn't like uh just one thing changed my mind it was like all these connections that were from even separate sources that all made sense and i was like oh my gosh and yeah, I, was, yeah. I was like blown away I was like, what the heck is going on it's like the world is different than i thought it was it's a different place uh, yeah but, yeah, uh, yeah, that, that was my experience as well. <laughs> the availability of uh, information, I would say. Yeah. 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 yeah and and all the jokes, all the Epstein yeah. jokes now are everywhere, even in just pop culture today yeah. now. You know, they're popping up like Epstein didn't kill himself. I mean, every uh, meme I've seen on Facebook, even from non political yeah, people. The one that like, hangs the was that Christmas lights. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. That oh, yeah. Is. Yeah. Saying that. Yeah. The funny thing is that that meme now, there's almost like a war on the meme. It's like people, there's some people who meme on it and laugh about it because they don't believe it. And that yeah. annoys me. I'm like, you should yeah. meme on it. You <laughs> should believe it because he yeah. did kill himself. <laughs> yeah. It, it's like so obvious. I mean, look at the, yeah, like you said, that new reporter who just was leaked that she said we had all this information and she didn't believe he killed himself either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, his the lawyer said that he was getting strangled by some prisoner, and they said, "Oh, that was him trying to kill himself." And it's like, "No, he's getting attacked." And he's like, "Oh my gosh!" But there's a lot of things that people are going to be who are like we people who are red pilled will be like, "Oh man, yeah, we knew this," you know. But a lot of people who are going to be like, "What?" You know? <laughs> yeah. And even after even after the fact that the information comes out and it's common knowledge, well, generally there'll be still some people who are still skeptical. They'll be like, "I don't believe it," <laughs> you know. There'll know. always be holdouts like that. Uh, yeah because it only takes one if people want to stay in their bubble they just need one fact to that they can latch on to and yeah. the, media, the media can give you that one fact it's not hard yeah it, it's like uh the matrix remember the matrix, the yeah, matrix. One where, remember the guy he said he knew that the matrix was fake but he wanted to be put back in and yeah, he, yeah, yeah he betrayed yeah. humanity to be put back in so he could just live a good life good and that kind of is like that kind of has a lot of meaning to me too when i see that because i'm like that's like a lot of people today they want to be 
they want to feel safe. Some of the people are scared to know the truth because it just it changes the whole worldview, and they don't want to know. They don't want to know this stuff, right? And there's yeah, some people who true, just, they, yeah, they just they just want to go back to a normal life and not know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, That'd be fun. So that's a taste of what could come, huh? <laughs> yeah. Future stream. <laughs> I know. Yeah. We'll <laughs> yeah, and we can actually do it on Nawal stream or even Matt. If you if you set up your stuff, we can just rotate. No. We yeah. Go, go. Yeah. I think it'll be yeah. fun to go on each other's channel. True. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna set up Streamyard in the next week, and I'll be interested yeah. to you guys about doing another stream soon. So yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Sounds yeah. good, guys. Yeah. yeah man. Buy and be the non non comic book <laughs> uh, uh was that professional cow <laughs> yeah I'm, 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 I'm in the weird yeah hmm. i don't even cool. know what to call myself in this project you're the, <laughs> you're, the you're the physics expert uh, yeah, the, yeah 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 i'm the physics. physics bracket youtube physics expert <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The, the practical mechanics of things <laughs> or you're our yeah our in-house expert on uh, making sure it sounds <laughs> Make sure just the theory right. sound. Yeah, you can be the skeptic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> hey, thanks guys. Thanks guys. I really yeah. enjoyed this stream. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think we. Fun. Yeah. And then oh. next one, shall we do it on Nawel's channel? I think yeah. so. Yeah, we can do it. Yeah, on yeah, yeah, yeah. We can. I, we, I think we can just go and uh, talk whatever we want. Anyway, it's Nawel's channel. We don't care. We, we strike it or what, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Just play footage of like my yeah. channel. You got you guys got to behave. Mm. Uh, well, cat yeah. photo will come to you. you gotta be careful uh, about the Hillary <laughs> stuff. Who knows? Oh, you know? <laughs> oh that's right. funny. Yeah, because they're not gonna get you in Singapore, tungsten. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Damn. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Okay, okay. All right. Okay. Time to uh, report to my boss, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 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 Time to go. It's time. Well, thanks, guys. So, uh, I think we'll <laughs> we'll leave it here. So, uh, help me share out this uh this this uh this stream. I think it's pretty funny, pretty great. Yeah. So thanks, yeah. thanks. Man. Yeah. Pretty I guess. Thanks, stop here. Yeah. So I'm gonna click on the stop broadcast now. Let me see. Stop. What we've been broadcast.